Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. Today is going to be amazing. We're going to have a great time. We have a bunch of projects that are going to get started. But before that, uh, I've got a little story time for you guys. So why don't you just sit down, you know, get yourself comfortable, uh, get yourself maybe some popcorn or something like that, because I'm about to hit you with a story that uh, I'm blown away about. So remember the other day when I got bit by this little cheeky monkey right here that seems like he wants to bite again? Now these guys are notorious for being relatively tame, but he definitely got a hold of me. So weirdly enough, that day, about an hour after I got bit by this guy, and he is just cranky. It's okay, little buddy. I promise things are going to be okay. I don't know why he's so cranky. About an hour after I got bit, I was really concerned, guys, because all of a sudden, I couldn't swallow. I got kind of real feverish. I had achy body, super low energy, and I was like, oh my God, do I, you know, during this time of life, you know, you don't want to have those symptoms, right? I mean, it literally felt like I had the flu, but my glands were so swollen that it, I could barely swallow, and I just thought that I caught a bug and I was like oh no please don't let this be COVID I ended up going home that day and uh, just resting the whole day felt like crap I mean just for six hours or so I felt terrible I ended up falling asleep that night waking up the next morning and relatively feeling normal and I was like oh my gosh whatever bug I had it must have just been a you know 18 hour bug or a 24 hour bug or something like that well interestingly enough about an hour ago my buddy Ryan at Underground, where I actually got this little dude from, called me up and he said, hey, I saw that video about you getting bit by Flapjack here. I want to tell you something. These guys have a relatively nasty venom. He said, what happens when you get bit, within a half hour, 45 minutes, all of a sudden, your glands swell up, you get really weak, you get achy, and it's hard to swallow. And I was like, are you kidding me? I literally thought that I had some bug. In actuality, this little monkey right here envenomated me. That's right, the exact symptoms that my buddy Ryan told me about was exactly the way I felt just from a bite from this little guy right here. So from now on, I'm gonna be extra careful with this guy. And trust me, when he gets bigger, you don't wanna get bit by something like this. So I tell you what, that was crazy. People ask all the time, are monitor lizards venomous? Well, the answer to that is 100%. Now I know I was envenomated by a monitor lizard this small, and I'm telling you what, that was some pretty severe effects from it. So I'd never want to do that again. And this guy, the whole time, has been opening his mouth wanting to bite me. So I don't want that to happen. So let's go ahead, get him back in, and uh, move on with our day. Come on, little monkey. Today is definitely a project day, or what I would say, checking projects off that list that I told you about before. Well, Lori actually climbed in here. We've already got the enclosure pretty much filled up a little bit. She sealed everything, not only all of this stuff, all of this stuff. She sealed a bunch of stuff that's in here, which is the filter itself. She basically spent like two hours inside here sealing everything that she thought could possibly leak. I have high hopes because number one, Lori is much more detail oriented than I am. And I've already tried to fix this three times and it failed. So uh, I feel like it's kind of a, a broken record when I say, let's give this a go. The problem is, is that we're gonna just fill this up another few inches. We'll turn the waterfall on. We really won't know for another day, maybe even two days, because it usually takes a couple days to build up and actually start leaking. So fingers crossed, let's say a little uh, homage to the reptile gods and hope that finally we have this leak fixed because if not, I'm literally done. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna have one of you guys come and fix it because I don't know what else to do. So let's go ahead, fill this up another few inches, turn the waterfall on and uh, fingers crossed. Well, the waterfall works, it looks good, but it looked good last time. And I think for the first day last time, I was like, okay, things are looking good. And then it started to leak. So now I'm just gonna put salt and pepper back and uh, we'll just wait and see what happens. Hi guys, come on pepper. Let's go bud. And then salty, here you go baby. Oh, got me a little wet there. So uh, now it's just a waiting game guys. We're gonna find out here in the next couple days if, uh, if this leaks and keep a close eye on it. And, Fingers crossed it all works out. Guess what guys, we have five, maybe six days at the most before this merch is gone forever. That's right, Ho Ho Drogo, ugly sweater merch. You will have it for Christmas if you order in the next five or six days. If you don't like the ugly sweater, we have t-shirts, we have hoodies, we have mugs that you can, it's a great Christmas gift. Let's get in the Christmas spirit with a little bit of a sloth. What do you guys say? Again, another five or six days, link in the description. Get you some now. We have a bunch of work to do in Drogo's enclosure today, to be honest with you. I'm gonna go inside here. Hey Jay, 
Hey, how are you? What are you doing? You just hanging out with Drogo? Yeah, feeding him some kale. Some kale? Yeah. Drogo, you're looking so cute today, you little monkey. So I love that little guy. So, couple things going on. We have a ledge here that we're going to secure up here, but I have to start the process. So uh, this is gonna take a few to kind of get it together. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do here. Also, we had a humidifier that was installed up over here because you wanna keep the humidity about 60 to 70% in here. Well, unfortunately, it was really loud and it was scaring Drogo, so we decided we were gonna get a rheostat to put on to kind of dull down the fan. So hopefully it'll run on a slower level level as far as like the noise but it will uh, be effective because right now we've been filling up humidifiers on the ground and Drogo likes to actually knock them over so first thing I'm gonna do is climb up here put the rheostat on see if the humidifier will run uh, and it won't scare Drogo and then we can start working on this ledge So we ended up putting that rheostat on here. You can see there's actually right now it's at 34% in here, according to that. We've got it set on 50%, but now you can barely hear it. Whereas before it was pretty loud, so what was happening is every time it would cycle on, it would scare Drogo. He would literally like freak out. We didn't want that, so we shut it off immediately. Now it's nice and quiet, but I can really feel the steam coming down right here. So this will be way better than having you know humidifiers that are just out on the floor and stuff like that. That way he can't get to it, number one. The other thing is this is piped right into a float where it'll go 24 hours a day. So I think it's gonna be really good. And Drogo, did you approve? Is that okay? Was it good for you, baby? <laughs> he wasn't happy, I'll be totally honest with you, but uh, uh, I think this is gonna work out well. Now we've gotta tackle this shelf to get this up here because sloths like to be high up on ledges as well as the food and everything else, and his bed will go here. You'll notice we removed the cage because the other day he decided to flip the cage over. So uh, we're slowly getting it to the point where now his bed can stay on the shelf, but we want that shelf to be up here, so uh, we'll get working on that. All right, back from Home Depot, and this is actually the bottom side of the ledge that's gonna go into Drogo's enclosure so that we can put his bed on there, the food on there, because sloths like to eat in elevated places. So this is where it's gonna go. It's gonna go about 42 inches off the ground. I've got these boards that are gonna actually attach to this on the bottom side, and then ultimately the boards will attach to the wall. That'll keep it safe. Then we'll wrap it with the polyurea, the rock thing, so that it looks like this ledge is actually built into the wall. So the first thing I have to do is kind of do some measurements, do some cuts so that the boards are all even in here, strap them down, and then I'm gonna show you, I can foam them on top. And then when the foam dries, it literally becomes hard as a rock, and that will actually give us a good platform so that the ledge actually stays up. So let's go ahead and make some measurements. So what I basically did was make a jig here, right? Really all this board, this board, and this board are the only thing that's gonna actually be on this. The rest is just to hold in place, but I want these boards to be level and I want them to all be jig this way, right? So that I can actually then bolt it to the wall. So what I have to do now is literally take foam and foam all of this area all on top of it, fill up this gap like here, fill up all this foam, and then those pieces will be locked in there. I can then take this jig up, I can bring boards up this way that will eventually attach to the wall and that'll keep it in place. So I know it's a lot of work. Trust me, it's all gonna work out when it's done, but uh, this is the first step. So now I just have to use a lot of great stuff foam.
And then once this foam dries, these pieces are going to be like attached like cement. I mean, they're going to be right there. Then I can actually attach the legs that are going to attach to the wall itself for sturdiness and just kind of put the whole thing together. And then the front here, I'm going to rock out so you don't see any of the foam and stuff like that. And then Drogo will have a nice place where we can put his little dog bed that he likes to sleep on. We can put his water bowl as well as his food bowl up there. And that's it. So uh, again, I probably won't be done for another day or two, but at least we got the start done and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Hey Ivy, what's going on girl? How you doing? Ivy just looked too cute to not come in here and hang out. And this is usually what she does when she wants to hang out with me, is she'll just kind of sit up on this spot right here. Hey baby, what are you doing? And she is looking amazingly big. I tell you what, she has grown so much. Hi baby girl, how are you doing? How are you doing baby? I gotta weigh her for sure. I mean, uh, remember last time we weighed her, I think she was 65 pounds if I'm not mistaken. She has definitely grown a bunch since then. There's no doubt about that. It's uh, it's crazy how big this animal goes. And anacondas do hit that spurt rate, right? Where they just get to that, you know, six foot mark or something. And then the females just explode in size. So she literally went from six and a half foot when we got her to probably closing in on 11, 12 foot now. And again, 65 pounds before, she has to have gained. I've got to imagine at least 15 or 20 pounds. So here in the next few days, maybe I'll go ahead and weigh her. She still has a little bit of a lump from the rabbit that we fed her just a few days ago. So I'm gonna let her completely digest and I won't like, you know, move her around and stuff like that because it's not good for snakes, especially with big meals like Ivy had to actually get moved around. So I'll, uh, I'll give her a few more days, get completely digested and then we'll wear her. Down in the comments, let me know, what do you think she weighs now? Again, she was 65 pounds about two months ago after a lot of meals. <laughs> she definitely has grown. So let me know in the comments uh, and maybe I'll pick the closest one that gets it. Again, to the pound, uh, I'll pick the closest one that gets it and uh, I'll send you some swag. What do you think? Down in the comments, let me know what you think this girl weighs. I'm, she's, she's definitely gaining some weight. <laughs> Again, things never stop here. We're always on the go, always changing things around. I'll be honest, we just drained the turtle pond and we're disinfecting it. And um, we're gonna change things up a little bit. You know, I've loved the turtles in here and they've been really, truly amazing. And we're gonna do something with them. But I'm thinking that what well, could bring this more to life because the turtles really hide a lot. They go underwater. Is what do you think about, you know, putting maybe 50 baby turtles in here? Not babies, but you know, well-started babies. Uh, maybe because they're gonna stay on the top of the water a lot more, a lot more moving. I think it might have a little more action. I'm not 100% sure I know exactly what I'm gonna do yet, but definitely wanna change this up. I've just never been completely happy with the turtle pond because again, you get one or two turtles that come up and then the rest of them just go and hide all the time and it's just not really great for interactive. So I wanna maybe do that and I'm thinking maybe baby turtles is the way to go, but uh, I'm not sure yet. In the meantime, we just uh, drained it, disinfect it and get it ready for whatever I end up deciding to do. We're finally at the end of the first breeding cycle. I told you I start the year typically with like a 10 or 11 day breeding cycle and then I narrow it down to five days and I do five day cycle so we are at the end of it unbelievable how many animals bred this is probably the best start to the breeding season I've ever had as far as copulations with males and females so today I actually take all the males back out put them back in their house they get fed tomorrow so the next you know 24 30 hours they're gonna be chilling out we're gonna feed the females we're gonna feed the males tomorrow and then that's when things really start getting excited because after they feed they usually have a lot of energy the females sometimes give off more pheromones right after they they eat. When I put these guys back together here in a couple days after feeding, I expect some really good breeding going on. And uh, that's when things get really exciting. And then a couple weeks from now, we'll do our first ultrasound and get our first glimpse to how the season may actually turn out, or at least the, the timing of it. Is it gonna be an early season, a late season? Nevertheless, gonna put all these males away and get ready to feed them tomorrow. Hey, RJ, what are you doing, silly monkey? You can stay there. You're okay, little buddy. Can't wait to get RJ a bigger enclosure for the Reptarium when we expand, but uh, what are you doing, bud? You going back in? You could just stay right there, bud, hang out. A lot of people ask me, you know, yes, he does get up on the top here alone, but he never comes down. He just hangs out here, likes to be in the dry a little bit. We have a spot over here for him to bask as well, but a lot of times he likes to climb up and I think he just wants to see what's going on. So that is extremely wild that I got envenomated by a little tiny monitor and had such bad effects. So I guess that solves it, guys. Definitely some monitors are venomous. I can attest to how bad I felt that was 
absolutely crazy. If you like this video uh, and you enjoy stuff like this, here's a playlist you can run through. It helps me if you watch some of that. So thank you so much. On this side, you can actually subscribe to my podcast channel called Checking In. Three days a week, you'll catch us over there. On this side, I hope that you're subscribed to this vlog channel. Turn your post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.